Facebook. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Harrington and I'm the Executive Director of the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Hi, I'm Daniel Lepoyarvi and I'm the Director of International Programs at Erdo. And this is Get to Know Your Canadian Food Grains Bank member. Daniel, uh, great to have you with us. Glad to be on board. Yeah, and you certainly are on board and, and so is your organization. So tell us a little bit about the work of Erdo and what you do. I'd love to. Erdo is the relief and development arm of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. We've been around for a few decades now. It started off in the 90s as a department of the international mission of the church. And since then, we've uh, transi transitioned into our own organization and still very much affiliated with PAOC. Um, and so, I mean, I know that you, as an organization, have, have work all uh, around the world, not just with Food Grains Bank, but elsewhere as well. What, what's a memorable visit you've, you've taken as, as part of that work? What have you seen that's really inspired you? Well, I've currently been in my, my role just uh, under two years, and most of that time has been during COVID. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to travel a whole lot in my role with Erdo, but definitely been involved in the global Pentecostal relief and development world much longer. Um, I'll, I'll take you to an early visit uh, that really transformed sort of, I guess, my uh, life and put my life on a whole new trajectory. Uh, that was early on, I was serving as a, as a missionary in East Africa and working with various social programs. Uh, we're visiting uh, the slums of Nairobi Kawankare particularly, and learning about uh, the life of street children there. Uh, it was heartbreaking uh, seeing young kids as, as young as six, seven, five, younger than my children at the time, and the circumstances that they were living in, uh, you know, off the streets, they were ostracized, uh, stealing for food, sleeping out, out outdoors and, you know, in, uh, and sort of roaming around in groups. And I remember seeing all of that and our local colleagues explaining the, the, their life and the situation to me. They, uh, they talked about these children living as sort of from different bases where they would, they would get, go, come together at night and sleep together at a base and then roam around during the daytime. And they do that because that offered them protection. And it was really just a field of mud where, where they would congregate. And they named these bases and each child belonged to a certain base. And these kids in Kamankare, uh, they were, their base they called uh, was Zion. And the kids were referred to as children of Zion. And I was just distraught when I heard that, that the kids were Christian enough to know that Zion is a safe place, it's a good place. But this was their experience of Zion. And then just seeing what Pentecostal churches were doing in these communities, trying to show the children or provide the children with an experience of Zion, which is much closer to the heart of God. Uh, so, so that for me was a transformational moment and sort of got me on the track that I am now. You know, it's... <laughs> In our work, it's so easy sometimes to sit back and, and, and deal with all of the administration, the logistics, the everything. But every, every now and then I hear a story that just takes me back to why we do what we do. And that's one of that would be one of them. The picture of Zion there. That's that's incredible. That must have been so inspiring for you. I mean, I mean, that takes us to our next question in, in terms of the spiritual aspect of what, of what we do. But is there a verse? you know, a Bible verse that you hold on to when you think about the difficulties of hunger, when you think about the difficulties of, of children like that? Well, uh, two verses come to, come to mind. One is uh, maybe the more obvious. Uh, it's uh, you know, Matthew 25, 35 onwards, where, mm -hmm. where, you know, upon the king's return, he talks about, you know, feeding the hungry, among other, other things, and, and our role in doing that to be to the least of of our neighbors, but uh, maybe even more so what comes to mind is really the, the memory or the theme verse of Erdo, which would be Isaiah 117. Uh, 
taking uh, up the cause of the fatherless, pleading the case of the widow, mm. defending the oppressed, uh, learning to do right and seek justice. Uh, when it comes to food and food insecurity, more so than about charity and feeding uh, people, I find it's a case of justice and injustice. Uh, and so, so that's that's probably a a guiding verse in how I approach uh, the topic. You know, it, it's such an interesting thing, isn't it? There's more than enough food in the world to feed everyone, and yet we're dealing at the moment with more than eight hundred million people in severe to acute hunger. Uh, it's the justice or the lack of justice yeah. it's so important to what we do, isn't it? And somehow the the ugly other side of the coin, in addition to the hunger and starvation, then we have these issues of obesity. Yeah. That the, the, the other, another part of the world is struggling. So. As, you, as you think these things through, and you've obviously thought these things through very deeply, I mean, you're involved in in response, you're involved in on the justice side, as well as the meet, meeting the immediate needs, the charitable side, you're in, involved in the justice side. So what is it you're most excited about right now in your work? Um, well, all aspects to some degree, I mean, they, they uh, excite me. I mean, we work in crisis response and humanitarian uh, initiatives. We work in longer term community development. Uh, we have a number of different child sponsorship programs that we're active in. And so uh, seeing the impact and the change of the work is inspiring. But at this very moment, uh, twofold answer for you. Uh, what's happening in Ukraine is heartbreaking. And I think caught many of us, if not all of us, by surprise. Uh, you know, it's uh, sort of shook us to our core. But the silver lining that has been seeing the church's response, uh, both domestically here in Canada, but even more so maybe in and around Ukraine. That what we've been engaged in over the last months has been to see a, a extremely uh, generous response from our Canadian constituency and just uh, seeing an exemplary response from churches in Ukraine and around Ukraine doing everything they can and beyond in responding to the needs of Ukrainians at the moment. Uh, so that's my, the first thing, my thing I'm excited about. And sort of uh, tagging onto that is, I, I also see that Ukraine is receiving a whole lot of media coverage. Uh, that, from our perspective, helps us in maybe raising many of, much of the resources that we need in the response. But uh, what I'm reminded about every day in our work is the numerous other regions, countries, and locations that are not receiving media coverage, mm -hmm. but are in just as difficult, if not more difficult circumstances than Ukraine. Uh, you know, the Yemen, Yemen, Syria, uh, Congo, Afghanistan, it's a long list of these places. And I'm inspired by the fact that even though these aren't on the media. Erdo is respond, are responding. Uh, churches are responding. They're continuing to respond, both domestically here in Canada, but also in, in these locations. They are the hands and feet of much of the response. You know, you know that's that's such a, a true thing. And, and I'm reminded that uh, in every one of these countries that you talked about, we're Food Grains Bank is either responding with multiple members or has plans. To respond and, and also as you speak about ukraine it's such a tragic situation but it's so true that the, there is a huge um ripple coming out from that tragedy that's causing inflation that's causing lack of food supplies there are over 50 countries and territories that receive a lot of their food supplies from the kind of ukraine russia area so it's, it's having huge knock knock on impacts that we're we're seeing across our network which um I'm really glad you're part of. I'm really glad you're part of the Food Grains Bank network. So what, what is it you like about being a member of Food Grains Bank? What, what, what draws Erdo into that? What, do you, what draws Daniel into that? How much time do we have for this? Then? So, <laughs> no, we, we, we're grateful. We're, we're really glad to be part of the network. Um, there's plenty to uh, be uh, glad about. I'd say uh, off the top of my head, it's the collaboration. It's the the sort of peer support. Uh, we're all 
we're not all the same, we're different organizations, but we have uh, a very similar value base and mandate uh, to our work. And that provides us with, with a lot of room for collaboration. Uh, we can learn from each other. We can share resources with each other. We can sort of um, maybe complement each other in some some cases. It's uh, I think uh, the, the Food Grains Bank is a is a very inspiring uh, expression of Christian unity, uh, not only in Canada between the fifteen member houses, but also as it rolls out into the global world. Uh, I find that especially when it comes to our food assistance, food security programming, uh, as part of the Canadian Food Grains Bank, we are able to do more, uh, whether it's through the match funding or just collaboration with other members. Uh, we definitely do better. Uh, the technical support we get sort of the uh, really uh, gaspars us to improve it and our programs uh, that, you know, which then leads to better results, better oversight, uh, and that then leads to greater impact of the work that we're engaged in. So, uh, oh, plenty of added value being part of this uh, amazing group. And you, we're so glad you are part of it. And, and one of the great things is you bring so much expertise to the group as well. You you help us to be better. And and we're so so thankful that Erdo is able to be part of this uh, this organization. It's been so great to talk to you today. Likewise, uh, glad to be part of it, glad to join this conversation and can, glad to continue the collaboration moving forward. Us too, Daniel. Thanks so much. See you Take soon. Care.